Hi there, welcome to my channel. This is Elizabeth with Wondering Soul Enterprises. And today we're gonna to be doing a love reading. Um, so I want you to start thinking about whoever's tugging on your heart. It could be a romantic connection. I'm gonna be reading it that way, but it could also be a friend or family member who's been tugging on your heart. Um, we're gonna read your love spell card. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the, um, the artwork that we have for each pile. Um, and then we're going to get your thoughts, feelings, and intentions, your person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions. We're going to take a look at the connecting energies, and then I'll draw some quotes to kind of get an idea of what your person might want to say to you, but is either too afraid to say or feels like they can't say for some reason. Um, and then we'll get some guidance for you as well. So... Um, I don't know how long this reading is going to take. I guess you'll see in the timestamps below. And before we kick off any of that, I'm going to go ahead and um, light our lily incense. I've already smudged. And then I'm going to ring the heart chakra bell. If you'd like to join me for the pre-reading meditation. So find a comfortable seated position or maybe lie down on your bed or on the floor with a nice long spine. Inhale through the nose filtering the air through your nostrils. Inhaling through the nose also helps us to regulate our temperature and our hormones. And exhaling nice and slow through the nose or through the mouth. Letting out all that air until you inhale again. And a nice full exhale. As we exhale, we're engaging the parasympathetic nervous system, body's relaxation response. And we're also expanding the blood vessels so that on our next inhale, we're able to more efficiently bring fresh oxygen to every cell in the body. And that oxygen is where we get most of our prana, our life force energy. We also get it from the food we eat, from the sunlight we absorb into our skin, and from each other's energy that we share. As you inhale, I invite you to draw your awareness to the center of the chest and you can visualize a green sphere of light growing brighter with every breath, radiating out into the universe with every exhale. Focusing on that green sphere of light.
Let's begin. All right. Hi, group one. Welcome to your reading. You chose the sunset colored agate slice. So lots of pink and orange, lots of sacral chakra, love energy, lots of passionate energy with white streaks of purity. I really like this pile already. <laughs> Um, and this is your love spell card. We're going to read that in just a minute. And then you chose the uh, mushroom carved out of pear wood. This is by, oh my gosh, I think it's Jack Graham. It could also be Jack Graylin. I'm so sorry. I can't read his signature. That's the artist. And it's carved out of pear wood. So before the reading, I kind of meditated on each of these carvings and looked at the symbolism. So I think it's really interesting. Pear, pear wood, um, the pear tree represents prosperity, good health, the future, happiness, divine sustenance, abundance, longevity. Um, and then the pear fruit represents the female form, fertility, femininity, and um, immortality, because I guess pears reproduce for many, many years before they die. And um, uh, it's also, you know, a symbol of abundance, food, sustenance. And then pear wood was used to carve idols of Hera, according to the internet, <laughs> something I read on the internet. So that's really interesting. interesting. You know, she's the goddess of marriage. Um, so that's kind of exciting. And then um, the other side of it is that pears can also represent separation, apparently, because the Chinese phrase for sharing a pear also, it sounds like the same word for separation. And so there's sort of this dichotomy of the dance between yin and yang and um, absence, making the heart grow fonder, giving each other space so that when you come back together into union, um, you have a new perspective on things. And then the other thing that I think is interesting is we think of the pear as that feminine shape, but then the mushroom is a masculine shape. And so the, the cool thing about the mushroom being carved out of pear, what is that? Also that union of the feminine with the masculine. Um, mushrooms can also represent abundance. They're also a, f a food. They can also be a poison, <laughs> but um, I guess a pear could be poisoned as well, right? Um, but mushrooms represent new beginnings, transformation. You know, they just pop up overnight, so they're like new developments um, in magic. So um, I also was thinking of the pears and the mushrooms both being food and um you know, two of my favorites, probably pears and mushrooms. So um, that feeling of flavor and um, just satiety, feasting was coming through. And along with that, like maybe a little bit of hedonism, lust, lusciousness. Um, so just my impressions from holding the carving before we get started, <laughs> I was feeling heaviness first of all, an expectation, which makes it think of pregnancy and fertility, um, sexual passion. Um, and then there was also kind of a feeling of sadness and loss, anxiety and apprehension, kind of going along with all of that, like a little bit of worry, I guess. Um, but also joy, abundance, excitement, lust, lusciousness, flavor, food, satiety, feasting, um, and I was also getting like harmony and that union of male and female. 
So this this pile is really juicy. I like it so far. And you could have a juicy pear and a juicy mushroom, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, pretty interesting. So let's see what this love spell says. Okay, you have Honey Love Tonic. I'm going to try to hold it here. Hopefully you can see it. I can't see the camera very well from here. I hope you can see it. Anyway, I'm going to read it to you anyway. Honey Love Tonic. Boil one pint of spring water. Place into your favorite crockery teapot a half ounce of any one of the following herbs. Rosemary, mugwort, yarrow, or thyme. Steep for 10 minutes and strain with a non-metallic strainer. Cheesecloth is great, or try an inexpensive bamboo strainer. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Sweeten with a little honey. I recommend clover honey because you get the added benefits of clover's lucky powers. Sip this brew while relaxing. Hmm. So maybe some honey love tonic would be nice to go with your mushroom and pears. <laughs> Um, that's neat too, because I was also thinking of like, oh, wouldn't it be good to like have like a roasted mushroom or a stuff, like stuff it with like some kind of like goat cheese or something and then have like a roasted pear with like a honey sauce. I was thinking like a brandy sauce, but honey would be good too. Something like that. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so for your reading, we are going to start, well, let's start with the Antique Anatomy Tarot to Let get your this, um, thoughts, feelings, and intentions. How's that? All right, let's try and do it like that. Okay, so let's get your person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions towards you using the medieval Scapini deck. edit out what just happened with the camera it was all wonky so if the reading seems choppy because of that I'm sorry but I don't know I'll, I'll have to decide if I'm gonna leave that in or fix it and I just re rearrange the cards so that you can see them and we're getting your person's thoughts towards you group one one's person. We have the three of cups. Keep those. We've got the five of wands. And we've got the seven of wands. Let's see if you can see this. Let's get your person's feelings towards you, group one. The magician. Magician. The emperor.
two swords. Okay. And then let's get your person's intentions towards you. Group one, your person's intentions towards you. The star. Judgment. and the two of coins. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm just kind of like studying the cards and absorbing the energies right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, wow, look, judgment. I didn't even realize judgment came out in the same position on both sides. That's pretty interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, all right. So um, <laughs> I, I like this energy. It, it's interesting. So I think group one on your side over here, feeling a lot of excitement and anticipation like we were talking about earlier. I think that was, a lot of that was your energy that I was picking up on actually. Um, I think you really like this person. You're thinking of them in a romantic way. If this is a, rom a, rom a romantic situation or you know, you're know you partnering with them somehow, but you're, you're thinking of them very fondly. Like you think the world of them, you wanna see them again. That's the vibe that I'm getting. Like you feel like they're, they're uh, just the bee's knees, I, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm seeing this. I, like they're opening new doors for you, changing your perception on how you see things, and um, you're really in. You're really uh, thinking about them a lot, and then I think they're thinking of you too, but in more of a playful, lighthearted way. Like, let's see where this goes. Um, yeah, this is a really interesting option here. Um, <laughs> unless you're already in a relationship, then I think they're just thinking about wanting to see you again. And, and I think either way, your person is looking forward to seeing you again, but it's also very playful, like uh, almost a, like a competitive vibe because we have five of wands and seven of wands coming out. And those are both pretty competitive cards, but they can also be pretty playful. So um, maybe they, I mean, they could want to play cards with you or something like that too, or thinking about how to gain the upper hand in the situation. Um, but I do feel like they think you're a lot of fun and they want to see you again. And I see that there is a pair along with some figs and one of these cups here. So they're picking up on your juicy pear qualities. Oh, and look, Yarrow Love Tonic is one of the tonics on uh, on the Two of Cups here. So that was like one of the herbs from your Love Tonic spell. 
How interesting is that? Oh, and clover too. Oh, I even talked about clover. How cool. I love that. Okay. Are there any other cool kooky ingredients on any of these bottles? No. The six of the six of uh, elixirs is all. Uh, it talks about sparrow labs. So a lot of sparrow symbolism there. All right. So for feelings. So again, you've got the page of rods, excitement. This is where you have the five of wands. They have theirs in your in their thoughts of you. You've got five of wands in your feelings. So you're a little confused and. Um, maybe wondering how they feel, I think. And uh, also that giddy, like playful feeling. I, I always feel like that with, when the Five of Wands comes out. And then um, you've also got the Page of Blades and the Knight of Coins. So I also think in your feelings, you're wondering if there's any long-term potential here. Like you, you're kind of sitting back, evaluating, watching this other person to see what their intentions are and whether there's any long-term, like steady, uh, devoted potential with this situation. Okay, and then on their feelings, we've got the magician. So they're definitely trying to um, manifest something with you. I think they want to see you again for sure. And um, they're really drawn in by your energy, attracted to that. And then we have the emperor. So there is that steady energy that's coming from them. And I think they do want to embody that um, masculine archetype. But then we've also got the two of swords. So it's almost like they're kind of um, feeling like they need to hold back for some reason. So maybe that more about that will come back, will come in to play later. And on this two of swords, one of the people on the card has a mongoose on his helmet and the other has a snake. So again, more of that competitive energy is coming through. It's almost feel like this person feels like, um, I mean, and, and I don't blame them because I feel this way too. I know it's like really old fashioned, but uh, love is war, right? <laughs> That's how I feel. Um, so they're trying to figure out how to win this battle, you know, and, and you need to figure that out for yourself too, group one. Like, uh, unfortunately, you know, as, as much as love is a beautiful thing and we should unconditionally love and forgive each other, when it comes to romantic love, like, uh, you gotta strategize. You've gotta like play your cards right, okay? No matter which, uh, side of the table you're on. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's talk about intentions. For you, group one, we have the queen of rods, and that's more of that juicy energy coming through, that passion, the fertility, um, that lust for life. The hibiscus is a very lustful flower, especially with that red color. Um, and then you've got the king, the king of blades, which is the king of swords, and judgment card both fell out. And so again, I think that you're kind of wondering if this other person is going to come back. Are they going to return? Are they going to um, uh, finish what they started? That type of a vibe. Um, yeah, and you're wondering if they're being awakened to, to this connection the same way that you are. And they are, because it popped up in their car in their in the same position on their cards, which is cool. And then we you've also got the three of coins, which is about uh, building something, getting together, um, and uh, cooperating together towards a common goal or just um Again, it could just be about spending time together and and creating um, good times with one another. Um, so your person's intentions towards you, we've got the star. So like they see you as their wish fulfillment. We've got three of cups up here and then the magician and then the star. So that's showing me they really feel drawn to your energy. They see you as this luscious, abundant, 
um, radiant person. They're trying to manifest you, your energy into their life and, and uh, you're basically their star, you know, they, they want to, they want to manifest you into their life. And then the judgment card, again, that's about wanting to um, finish what they started. They want to come back again. They, they want to, they want more, right? They're coming back for more. And it's interesting too. We've got the five of wands, the emperor and the judgment card. So it's like, they feel challenged by you. That's what I'm seeing here. Like you're challenging them to be that emperor. I love it. <laughs> and then, um, and I'm, I guess I'm, since I'm calling this one, the emperor, I'm kind of thinking of this as more of the masculine side, but it doesn't have to be that way. And you can all, also take whichever side you resonate more with. There could be mirroring, um, all that kind of stuff. So, um, as far as their intentions towards you, we also have the two of coins which means they're trying to they're trying to plan out their next move. We've got seven of wands, which is about trying to, you know, stay on top of the game, strategize, stay on top of that fence. You know, they want to have that better. Seven of wands is about positioning yourself in the strongest position possible. Two of swords, he's strategizing, trying to figure out how to win this game. And then two of coins is making a decision on um, how to approach you. And in this particular two of coins, it's based on a story. Um, I don't think it's in the New King James Version, but it's like one of those lost books, or it could be in Catholic Bible, I'm not sure, but there's a story about Susanna. So this is Susanna and these men try to like trap her basically. So hopefully it's nothing that sinister or violent in your case. Uh, group one, but I, I do think maybe this person is trying to, to like figure out how to seduce you into their their trap. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> be careful if you do feel any weird vibes, but um, yeah, I, I think it's more like they just want to figure out how to like gain the upper hand in the situation and and keep you in their life. And I think you're really excited about them. So this pile has such a cute energy. I love it. Okay. So next we're going to look at um, the, the connecting energies between the two of you. And I guess I'm going to use antique anatomy for that too. Um, so I, I call this the pyramid of love spread, but I, I think that kind of makes people think of a, like a love triangle. It's not like that. It's just like the way it lay, it's laid out is like a pyramid. Okay, so let's start with a card for your energy that you're embodying in this connection group one and then we'll get a card for your person's energy that they're inhabiting and then a card for the way your person is seeing you the perception of you to come out um, and then the way you're perceiving or seeing your person okay and then we're gonna get the passing energy of the connection oh my gosh okay hold on hold on hold on we're not gonna take all of these no 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 we all have some history together though because a whole bunch flew out okay what's the passing energy What's the current energy? And the coming energy, the approaching energy. Okay, I'm 
gonna reshuffle these and if they're meant to come out, they'll come out again. They're approaching energy. Okay. And then let's get a card for the top to represent like the overall energy of the connection that um, spirits want to talk to us about today. It's the overall energy of the connection they want to talk about today. Okay. So for your embodied, your embodied energy in this connection, we've got the five of elixirs, huh? It's a lot different than the vibe I was getting just a minute ago. Um, your person's energy is four of coins. Okay, so for some of you, um, this could be sort of a reunion type of pile, or you're both, or it's a new relationship and you're both um, kind of wounded from your past. That's what I'm getting here. Like, He's guarded, or, or your person's guarded. I'm saying he, but it could be her, whatever. Um, they, your person is a little bit guarded and you are maybe a little blue, a little depressed, a little, feeling a little down. Um, and then their perception of you is, um, did I get this right? I don't even remember if I shuffled these out right. You know, this is supposed to be their perception of you. I hope I said that right. Um, the, we've got the eight of coins and the seven of elixirs. So um, temptation, wanting to work things out. Your perception of them is the um, ace of coins and the 10 of blades. So I feel like um, your your perception of them is like, this could be kind of go either way. It's kind of like on the knife's edge. Like you see this knife holding up all the other blades, like it's on the knife's edge. Um, and you're just like, is this gonna be something real or not? Like straight up, tell me. <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I'm getting, okay? And then the passing energy, we have the King of Rods, passing energy of the connection. Current energy is the Page of Elixirs. And then the approaching energy is the King of Coins. Huh, wow, okay. So yeah, it's like this, this, this relationship might be in a stage where it's like, okay, is this just like, uh, a crime of passion or is this going to be something like steady and real and ongoing with a lot of longevity but there's a lot of love here but it's like a newly developing love too with the page being here we have like that immortality energy coming through too because this says eternal youth the pair could represent immortality. Um, so for the overarching energy that um, the spirit wants us to discuss today, we have the Ten of Rods. So talking about boundaries, responsibilities, who's responsible for what, and the King of Blades. So that's about clear communication and um, again, a king of blades is good at setting boundaries um, and uh, just making also uh, making clear decisions, clear decision making, cutting out what doesn't serve you, figuring out who's responsible for what. And wow, it's, we've got three kings here in this energy. How interesting is that? Three kings. When I see three kings, I always think of the three wise men, so wisdom. OK. 
okay? So let's clear this. And then the next thing we're gonna do is, um, well, the overarching energy they want us to address is uh, boundaries. So we'll get some oracle cards. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, and, oh, I was actually going to get quotes next. I think that's the next thing. And then we'll look at a healing spell. Um, we'll get some oracle cards to talk about boundaries. That, all that good stuff. So these quotes are meant to maybe represent messages that your person would say to you, but maybe something's holding them back. Or it could just be messages that you need to hear. Got a bunch of quotes here. I'm just gonna read them all out. Life is short, break the rules, forgive quickly, kiss slowly, love truly, laugh uncontrollably, and never regret anything that makes you smile. Mark Twain, I love that. We are what we pretend to be, so we must be careful about what we pretend to be. Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Sometimes the people around you won't understand your journey. They don't need to, it's not for them. Jobert Botha. It's always fun to walk down the street with or behind a really beautiful woman for no reason other than to see how the world reacts to them. Jonathan Carroll. Aww. A creep is someone who claims he's one thing, but he's actually another. Matthew McConaughey. Ooh. Your mental health is everything, prioritize it. Make the time like your life depends on it because it does. Mel Robbins. Guys are like dogs, they keep coming back. Ladies are like cats, yell at a cat one time and they are gone. Lenny Bruce. I urge you to please notice when you're happy and exclaim or murmur or think at some point if this isn't nice, I don't know what is. Kurt Vonnegut Jr. And zest is the secret of beauty. There is no beauty that is attractive without zest. Christian Dior. All right, and then we've got mental health affects every aspect of your life. It's not just this neat little issue you can put into a box. Shannon Purser. More messages about mental health coming up. You'd have to spend a lot of time with me before I'd be comfortable enough to show my dark side. Julianne Moore. She wanted something to happen. Something. Anything. She did not know what. Kate Chopin. Oh, I definitely got that vibe from your energy group one. Oh, have I offended you with my opinion? You should hear the ones I keep to myself. Patsy Cline. I don't forgive people because I'm weak. I forgive them because I'm strong enough to know people make mistakes. Marilyn Monroe. Mind your own business, take care of your affairs, and don't worry about other people so much. Betty White. Oh, we had a message like that coming through from these quotes too. Keeping your eye on your own paper. <laughs> Get at least eight hours of beauty sleep, nine if you're ugly, Betty White. For the sense of smell almost more than any other has the power to recall memories, and it is a pity that you use it so little. Rachel Carson. Okay, so there's your quotes. Take this how they resonate. I do feel like some of you may have a history with this person and maybe a need for forgiveness, healing, and keeping your eyes on your own paper and taking control of your own healing. I'm gonna draw a healing spell for you guys. We 
of herbal healing essence for an immune system boost. Okay, I'm gonna read that in just a second. I'm gonna get a green oracle card. We have card number 32, stones. Okay. We get a yogic path oracle card. So I do feel like there's a need to clearly communicate your boundaries with this person. And that Patsy Klein quote came up about, oh, have I offended you with my opinion? You should hear the ones I keep to myself. Like, I, I'm taking that as a message for you, group one, that maybe sometimes you feel like you've got to um, keep things to yourself, but don't let that get in the way of um, speaking your truth and defining your boundaries with this person. Um, yeah, so we also got tapas, which tapas is the energy of burning off things that no longer serve you. It's like a heating energy. Self-discipline. Okay. Um, you've gotten where you are. It's one of the niyamas, self-discipline. Okay. So it says, you've gotten where you are because of your discipline, tapas, and this will continue to take you where you need to go. While discipline sounds like a heavy word, it's really just committing to becoming the highest version of yourself. The next evolvement will require refinement of your inner strength. You're undergoing a deep transformation, stepping outside of your comfort zone, gaining strength, moving through fear. And now is the time to ask yourself the important questions. What practices have I committed to? What practices do I still need to commit to? Is my daily routine serving me? How can I improve it? Where do I need to set boundaries in my life to further align with my truth? And am I showing up for myself the way I would for a friend or a child or a lover, I would add. <laughs> Okay, so it's about keeping your eyes on your own paper and taking care of the things that you need to do. Stones can be about getting grounded, having a strong foundation. Um, besides the beauty and the therapeutic benefit of crystals, bringing them into our space can help make a space feel less artificial and more harmonious to our spirits. There's a crack in every stone. It doesn't make it weaker. It makes it alive. Roots and foundations are the starting point to make anything last. Even the hardest stone slowly changes and substance doesn't need to be pretty. So yeah, I think there's a focus on getting grounded on your own world, focusing on the things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis and um, making sure that you have a strong foundation on your own or with this other person, whether you're gonna move forward together or alone, basically you need to have your own stuff in order. And then for your healing spell, we have herbal healing essence. For an immune system boost, crush a mixture of equal parts, rosemary, sandalwood, and the petals of a red carnation. Place the crushed herbs in a colored glass jar filled with virgin olive oil. 
After seven days storage on a windowsill so as to be exposed to both sun and moon, strain and place the infused oil back into the jar. You now have a hearty supply of homemade healing oil to use in the bath or rub on your pulse points, temple, wrist, back of knees, and behind the ears. As soon as you feel run down, one application should make a difference. Cool. So the spells are just like little ideas for rituals you can do to bring more magic into your life. But, you know, I always think it's nice to be creative and make it your own. But yeah, so that's what I have for you, group one. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this message was helpful to you in some way. And um, if you would please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more content. And I look forward to seeing you again sometime. Thank you. Take care. Hi, group two. Welcome to your reading. Thank you for joining me. You chose the slice of green agate. So beautiful. Ah, love it. And the um, little tree carved out of wisteria wood. This is by an artist named John Thompson. And this is my tree that I picked out in Colorado <laughs> before my copycat son and our copycat friends decided they were going to get their own trees too. <laughs> so this was the one that I felt intuitively drawn to. And um, so I was kind of feeling the energy of the wisteria and also um, looked up some of the symbolism for wisteria before the reading. So I wanted to share some of those um, insights with you. So, you know, quick Google search, wisteria can represent resilience and longevity, um, romance, good luck, kindness, um, and then it's it's bowing, it's always bowing and drooping. If you look at a picture of wisteria flowers, they kind of droop, sort of like a willow. So it can also represent sadness, rejection, lost love, humility, reflection, prayer. And then some people see the wisteria flower as um, a connection with the divine. Like supposedly gypsies would wash their hands. Gypsy, I don't even know if that's politically correct, but supposedly people would wash their hands in wisteria flowers before doing like a tarot reading in order to um, connect with the, the divine and their intuition. So that's interesting. I've never thought about doing that before. Um, but uh, it, it can also represent that connection to the divine. And in some stories, that sadness, that droopiness is the, the tree showing its sadness caused by separation from the divine. So it can also symbolize like divine love sent to earth from the gods, sort of like that Messiah energy. Um, so it's a really beautiful uh, flower and beautiful tree. And I love how the artist kept that stooped vibe. So it almost looks like the tree, the tree is bowing or praying. So I really love that energy. And then some of the insights that I got just from holding it, and this is after I kind of looked up the symbolism, but um, humility, prayer, wisdom, sadness, heartache, true unconditional love, hurt, pain, wisdom, flexibility, healing, beauty, romance, and um, beauty and brokenness. So I feel like group two, you, you all might be experiencing some heartache, um, that you're healing from and um, yeah hopefully we'll get some insight on that today and then let's read your love spell so this is come to me love potion if you're dreaming of real romance you can bring about visions of your true love from this potent potion three drops of rose oil three drops of lavender oil three drops neroli oil or orange blossom essence, and four ounces of pure distilled water. Pour into a colored glass spray bottle 
and shake well three times. Um, 15 minutes before you go to bed, spray lightly on your linens, towel, and pillowcase. Keep a dream journal on your nightstand so you can record details of the great love you will soon manifest. Oh, okay. So it's a dream, dreaming spell. I like that. It's a way to connect with your intuition. Cool. So we're going to start by getting your energy... And then we'll get your person's energy. And, and when I say your energy, I'm talking about your thoughts, your feelings, and your intentions towards your person over here. And then we'll get your person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions towards you. And then after that, we'll do a, an energy check for the connection, like your intertwining energy. And then we'll get messages for healing and guidance. Okay, so group two, can we get group two's energy towards their person? Okay, and group two's feelings towards their person. intentions towards that person. person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions towards you. person's thoughts towards me. There's a lot that wants to come out here. Okay. And then group two's person's feelings towards them. person's intentions towards them. Whoa! Wow. Can we get one more card for group two's person's intentions? intentions towards your person we have the fool I mean this is your thoughts I'm sorry thoughts towards your person the fool the king of rods and the seven of coins and um, for your feelings towards your person we have the nine of coins 
the three of rods and the nine of blades. And then your intentions are the wheel of fortune, the seven, I mean, sorry, the eight of coins, and the queen of coins. Okay. And then um, your person's energy towards you, group two. So we've got their thoughts towards you. For their thoughts, we have the Three of Cups, um, the Popus, which is the High Priestess, and then we have these two come out. We have the Seven of Cups and the Ten of Swords. Okay. And then for your person's feelings towards you, we have Death. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what did I do here? Okay, death, and then um, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Nine of Wands for their feelings towards you. And then their intentions towards you, we have the Ace of Cups, we have the Two of Wands, and we have the Hanged Man. Okay, and I did turn, I turned all these right side up i i mean i take the reversed meanings of the cards into account but i usually just turn the cards right side up to make it less confusing for me i feel like the messages come through more clearly that way so i just try to always keep in mind that each card has a um a more positive meaning more negative meaning there's a lightning and a shadow meaning so i just keep all of those meanings <laughs> in mind as I'm as I'm reading the messages so yeah I feel like um there may be some history here between you and your person group two and it may be sort of a challenging history I feel like there's a lot of um um I don't want to say bad blood but maybe just I, mean, I think there is a lot of love here too, but um, like I feel like you've both maybe put a lot of energy into this connection and maybe you're both kind of wondering about whether it's worth continuing to put energy into this. We had the world card showing up for both of you, so that, oh no we don't, I'm sorry, it's a wheel of fortune, <laughs> I'm calling it the world card, it's a wheel of fortune, so I feel like that means like both of you are kind of um, leaving this up to fate, they've got that in their feelings towards you, and you've got that in your intentions, like they're trying to let go, y'all are both trying to let go, but um, yeah, so your thoughts of them, we've got the Fool, the King of Wands, and the Seven of Coins. So to me, that means like, um, there's part of you that wants to just jump into this, take a leap of faith, have a new beginning with this person, or maybe you're having a new beginning on your own right now, and you think of them a lot, you've got a lot of passion for them, um, there's something about them that really lights you up, that really lights your fire, but you're also not sure if that's really the energy that you need in your life right now um, with that seven of coins being there. And then their thoughts of you, we've got three of cups, the high priestess, and then the seven of cups clarified by the 10 of swords. So I feel like they are tempted by you, they miss you. I, with that Ten of Swords, it feels like there's been a separation or a betrayal of some kind, especially when it's landing over the Seven of Cups, because Seven of Cups could mean like considering lots of different options, lots of illusions, um, 
and temptations. So, you know, this person may be feeling their energy pulled in lots of different directions and um, maybe it's led to an ending of some sort. And they're wondering whether it's best to kind of just let things stay in that state of being ended or what, but there's also this yearning to return and to maintain a friendship and to enjoy each other's passion and, and company. And then I also feel like they, they think of you a lot, like you're on their mind a lot with the high priestess being here. She's also very tempting, very mysterious. Um, so I feel like you've kind of both learned a lot from each other. And then for feelings, you've got the nine of coins, the three of rods, and the nine of blades. So, um, yeah, nine of coins is very independent energy. You're focused on your own success, your new beginning. Maybe you're you're starting out as an entrepreneur or something. Because we've got the full nine of coins and the wheel of fortune. That's kind of an entrepreneurial energy. Um, but you're focused on you and your own healing. Um, you've got the three of wands right under that king of wands. So yeah, I think you kind of think sometimes about, you know, is there any potential that I'm gonna see this person again, that we're gonna reconnect. But also we've got the nine of swords. So that's indicating some sort of heartbreak, anxiety, um, worries. So I, I, th I think that you do miss this person if, if you're not, if they're not in your life at this time, I think you're missing them. Um, and I think they all, you're also a little anxious about what it would be like if they did return into your life, whether that would mess up your own stability. Um, and I think you're really trying to keep your eyes on your own paper and focus on yourself, if that's the case. If you're together, I think you're considering whether this is gonna last for the long term or not, perhaps. And there may be some concerns with the connection, some red flags, and you're kind of wondering how this is all gonna pan out for the future. How much energy you should invest in this versus pulling your energy back and focusing more on yourself. And then in your person's feelings, I've got, I've got, in your person's feelings, we've got the death card, the wheel of fortune, and the nine of wands. So I think your person is also feeling maybe a little wounded here, um, guarded, and uh, I feel like there's maybe been an ending here. Again, the death can represent an ending. The Wheel of Fortune rep can represent an ending and, and new beginnings um, and timing. So I feel like, you know, this ending may have happened in the past. Maybe some time has gone by. Maybe they're still feeling a little wounded from what's happened though. And they're hoping that with more time, um, that more healing's gonna happen. And I, with the death card, I also feel like you've transformed them in some way. And that they think about that, it's kind of brought them into this new perspective, this new mindset. I think they wonder if they're gonna see you, if your fate is gonna reconnect the two of you again and I think they're a little nervous about how to handle that if it does happen. I think both of you are feeling that way about each other. And if you're still together, there may be something that's like, 
creating some sort of obstacle in the connection and it's getting really hard for both of you to deal with it. And so I think if, if you are together, you're have, having a little difficulty seeing the path forward together and kind of both pulling back your energy and thinking about what you want for yourselves. Because I'm seeing a lot of nines. You've got nine of coins and nine of swords. And they've got, I guess they've just got the, um, the nine of wands. Okay, and then um, for intentions, for you, we've got the Wheel of Fortune, the Eight of Coins, and the Queen of Coins. So I feel like this, this Queen of Coins is like the more grown-up version of the Nine of Coins. Um, she's like got her own bag. She's got prosperity, and she could be fine on her own or with a partner. Um, Eight of Coins is about working hard, focusing on your goals, focusing on what you're trying to manifest. And um, I think there's a willingness to work with this person if they came forward in the right kind of light. But I also think that you're a little um, skeptical that they're gonna be able to bring that kind of energy forward, like a king of pentacles to match your queen of pentacles energy. And then, um, or, or you may be looking for someone who meets more of a queen of pentacles energy and you're not sure if this other person does or not. Um, yeah, so I think you're kind of leaving things up to fate, kind of trying to surrender this connection with the Wheel of Fortune being here. I think that's about surrendering this connection to the divine, to fate, and trying to keep your eyes focused on your own paper. And then for your person, their intentions, we've got the Ace of Cups, unconditional love, but it did come out reversed in the beginning. So to me, that also means that they are trying to focus on loving themselves as well. Like maybe that's part of the problem here. Maybe this person um, is having a hard time with self-love and uh, needing to get some clarity on, on a what it is that they they need to do to bring love into their life. I don't know why that's coming through like that. And then the two of wands, um, it's about being at a crossroads. It's about making decisions. Um, in this deck, we've got this Faustian imagery. So it can also be about like bargaining. And um, I think they're going through a hard time trying to make a decision about which pathway to take in their life and and to do that in a way that shows love to themselves and to other people. Like they're struggling with that, I think. And then the hanged man is about holding back your energy. Um, it's, it's a card of inaction. So I feel like neither one of y'all are really planning to act towards one another. Take that how it resonates. Um, but I, I think you're both on each other's minds, in, in each other's hearts, and you've both learned a lot of lessons. This Wheel of Fortune card I also think about as lessons because it's associated with astrology, with the sky. I mean, our birth charts, like all of that teaches us lessons. And actually, while we're talking about that, I'm going to draw some astrology flashcards here. See, we've got Gemini. So Gemini could be someone's sun sign um, or 
in the top three, like rising, moon, energy. And we've got the fifth house of good fortune. So someone could also have Gemini in their fifth house. Um, so the fifth house of good fortune is about children, creativity, pleasure, and sex. And um, Gemini is uh, talkative, friendly, scattered, extroverted, nosy, analytical, adaptable, adaptable intelligent, and curious. So look up your rising sign and find out where your fifth house is, figure out what's happening there, um, figure out where Gemini is in your chart, what's going on in Gemini right now. I don't really know if there's any planets in Gemini right now that I can think of. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go ahead and clear this out. Um, and then we'll look at the the connecting energy of the connection. I think I'll use the Medieval Scapini deck for that. And hopefully I'll do it right this time. I'm not sure I did it. I'm not sure I did it right for, for pile one. I didn't tell them that I said that. <clears throat> okay, let's see. So let's get your energy that you're inhabiting in this connection. We've got this six of wands. Look we'll at your person's energy that they're currently inhabiting in this connection. It's the eight of wands, okay? And uh, what? how is your person perceiving you and your energy, group one? How's your person perceiving you? We have the Five of Cups, okay? And how are you perceiving your person? Judgment. Okay. Whew. I'm gonna go ahead and, and shuffle out the rest of the cards and then we'll talk about it. So. Um, the passing energy. Nine of Swords. Current energy of the connection. The Magician. And what's the approaching energy? We have the Five of Wands. Lots of Wands coming up for this part of the reading. And then what's the overall energy of the connection that the spirit would like us to focus on when we start to talk about guidance and healing? What's the overall connection of it? Hold on. What's the overall energy of the connection that we need to focus on? Knight of Wands. Okay, <clears throat> another wand card. So yeah, I'm definitely getting like, this is the pile that is facing like a potential reunion or it's a pile and separation where you're still thinking about each other. Um, so Six of Wands for your energy, you're trying to move on, move forward, be successful in your own life. That's the energy that you're embodying. The energy a person's embodying is the Eight of Wands. So that's also a card of movement, moving forward, lots of activity. But also, I think they are wanting to reach out. There's a temptation to want to reach out to you, to connect with your energy, or to project their energy towards you. And then, um, like, they want to communicate. But 
I also feel like there's something holding that back because they have the hanged man in their intentions. So they're perceiving you as the five of cups. So kind of the one who got away type of energy, regrets, loss. And then you're seeing them through the eyes of judgment. So I think this connection keeps coming back around. Like you've learned lessons from it. It's taught you a lot but it, you're still having a hard time letting it go and it keeps coming back up, resurfacing from the dead. And, and part of you wants that to happen and part of you is not so sure, I think. And, and you're trying to stay focused on your own life and just letting this be what will be, um, letting divine justice take its course, <laughs> you know, allowing allowing uh, the higher power to decide whether this connection should be brought back into your life or not. I think you're surrendering here, but it's also, it's also sort of a challenge. Like you're feeling them tugging at your heart with the judgment card. Um, so the nine of swords is what the energy that's passing. So that's anxiety, staying awake at night, um, sadness, despair, so yeah, I think that you've both shed a tear or two over this. The magician is about action, manifestation. I think you're both trying to kind of like move past this heavy nine of swords energy and bring lightness and activity into your life and start focusing on what it is that you want for yourself. Trying to, trying to connect with inspiration, the magician card here. Five of Wands coming up next is confusion, um, a lot of passion, but like a lot of confusion and muddled energy. And it can be a playful energy, but I'm not really feeling that playful vibe so much for this pile. It's more of a like a confusing vibe. So it's like you're trying to find some inspiration, but it's like this person's always going to kind of drive you a little bit crazy and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, but yeah, I, I guess sometimes that's just the way it is. And then we have Knight of Wands for this overall energy. So that's about um, passion, energy, excitement, anticipation, but also like the fleetingness of, of that. The Knight of Wands comes in quick and leaves just as quickly. So I think part of the healing is um, learning about like the value of those quickly fleeting affairs and also like the flip side of that being like more of like a knight of pentacles type of energy where you're moving forward in your own life, creating stability for yourself and not getting too distracted by the Knight of Wands characters that come in and out of your life. Um, so yeah, that might be a big theme coming up. You know, someone could have gotten burned by the Knight of Wands. Someone might be addicted to behaving like the Knight of Wands. Like stuff like that can come up when I see him there. Okay, so, um, whoa, <laughs> I don't know why I even shuffled these. I'm not even gonna use them right now. Let's move on to the quotes. So we're gonna get some quotes and these could represent messages that your person, like things that they would say to you if they could or if they weren't too scared. It could also be just messages for you from, from God or spirit or from your intuition, higher self. So we have, knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darkness of other people. Carl Jung. Okay. Beauty is unbearable, drives us to despair, offering us for a minute the glimpse of an eternity that we should like to stretch out over the whole of time. Albert Camus. I think that's 
a nice way of putting what I was trying to express about that Knight of Wands energy. It's like, oh, it's so inspiring, so beautiful, so passionate, and but it also creates that sense of despair in knowing that it can't last forever, right? Your life is the front of your own doing. You have no one to blame but yourself, Joseph Campbell. Again, that theme of personal responsibility coming through. A man does what he must in spite of personal consequences, in spite of obstacles and dangers and pressures, and that is the basis of all human morality. John F. Kennedy. The body of a beautiful woman is not made for love. It is too exquisite. Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. Happiness is being at peace, being with loved ones, being comfortable, but most of all, it's having those loved ones. Johnny Cash. Often the best way to relax is just to go back to work. Steve McQueen. <laughs> I'm definitely getting that in your energy, group one, because you had the eight of coins and the queen of pentacles in your... Uh, intentions and that entrepreneurial energy was coming through too and then the current energy of the connection was the magician so I kind of feel like you're both in that vibe like just trying to focus on what you need to do to manifest those practical things for your own life and and it's going to require some work okay just because no one else can heal you or do your inner work for you doesn't mean you can, should, or need to do it alone. Lisa Oliveira. Okay, so we had a lot of energy of you both trying to focus on your own paper here, a lot of independent energy. So I like that quote coming up here. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, no one can do it for you, but you could still reach out for help. Maybe not from this other person, but through tarot readings, through meditation, through connecting with a counselor or a friend that you can talk to. Um, there's resources available for support. Um, so often in life, things that you regard, and, and also prayer, you know, the, the wisteria can represent prayer. So that's another uh, avenue to turn to for help. So often in life, things that you regard as an impediment turn out to be great good fortune. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So whatever's happened in this connection, maybe it feels limiting at times, but it could be your lucky charm that you that's in disguise. Beauty is a radiance that originates from within and comes from inner security and strong character. Jane Seymour. It's hard to be a diamond in a rhinestone world. Dolly Parton. Being able to be your true self is one of the strongest components of good mental health. Dr. Lauren Fogel Mercy. So yeah, a lot of emphasis on building your own strong character, being yourself, not being afraid to be yourself. Oh, and then <laughs> tough love. <laughs> Pour yourself a drink, put on some lipstick and pull yourself together. Elizabeth Taylor. Maybe a drink of love tonic. <laughs> love potion um how wrong is it for a woman to expect the man to build the world she wants rather than to create it herself yeah female empowerment get your own bag my attitude toward men who mess around is simple if you find them kill them loretta lynn of course i'm not advising anybody to literally kill anybody, but I can see where she's coming from. Like, if if somebody does you wrong, like, why give second chances to a man who doesn't deserve one, right? Sounds nice, but Loretta Lynn didn't actually do that in her real, in real life. She put up with that guy for a long time. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and get some um, oracle cards to get guidance for you, group two. 
I think a lot of guidance did come through in the quotes as well. love and healing. The ultimate alchemy is to generate positive energy that spirals outward, improving everything in its path. You can contribute to universal peace and healing by burning a white candle anointed with rose oil on your altar during a waning moon on Saturday. Saturn's Day. Place a single white rose in water and lay a garlic clove beside some rose incense. Light the incense, then take a bundle of white sage, light the end, and pass the smoke over your altar to smudge the space. Chant, war and grief will come to an end. We walk the path of peace. Love thy neighbor as thyself. All we need is love, with harm to none, only understanding. Oh, I like that. Just praying for peace and love and healing for this relationship. I think that's one of the best things any of us can do when we're in a situation like that where things are kind of tough whether you're together or not you can pray for peace love and healing in this connection do a little ritual to enforce those intentions Number 23, Harmony. It's not pretty. The rainbow. Let's read what the guidebook says about that one. Harmony should be reached first in the little things. It comes out of spontaneity, created out of moments without purpose or gain focused on the feelings of the present moment. Innocence, which comes so natural to children and animals, is not about virtue. It's about letting go of everything else but the present and reaching out, sharing that moment, not just with you, sharing that moment, not just within yourself, but freely with others who share it in return. Enjoy the good moments. Um, Harmony can be found in the company of others. Serenity only comes from simple things, and there's never a better moment than the present. Oh, I love that. So yeah, ritual for healing, peace and love, and then just appreciating those peaceful, loving, healing moments when they come into your life with your children, with your friends, with your pet, with your loved ones, with any new love connections that are coming into your life. Um, just appreciating those little things that bring us joy and bring us together. That reminds me too, um, gosh, I guess it was like a year or two ago. Um, I was feeling really isolated, you know? I mean, I think a lot of us have felt that way or did feel that way during COVID and I definitely did because I work from home and everything. And um, I started writing down in my journal, like every single time I had any sort of <laughs> interaction with anybody whatsoever. <laughs> like uh, if somebody at the grocery store made eye contact with me, I would like write it down in my journal. And I started doing that every day. And then after a while, I started to notice more and more connections and they got to be more and more meaningful. And now I don't even do it anymore because I've, I've got uh, some connections that I'm dealing with on a daily basis that, you know, I, I feel like 
I've got enough, <laughs> I've got enough going on in my life now that I don't have to like journal about every single little interaction that happens. But it was really eye, eye opening and helped me to, to see how much I was connecting with people and to kind of ma help manifest more of that. So that's an idea that if you are feeling isolated or lonely, you can do what I did. All right, let's get a yoga nidra. Yoga nidra. I don't know why I said yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is another um, nice way to clear your energy and find peace and healing. Um, okay, we're gonna get a card from the Yogic Path Oracle. Just some guidance for healing for group two. Okay, Ojas uh, is an Ayurvedic term for the subtle essence of health and well being, peaceful and patient. One look is all it takes to see how much ojas somebody has. Have people been coming up to you and telling you how healthy, rested, and happy you look? This is ojas. Ojas is the subtle essence related to health and well-being with which you are filled. You radiate good health with your glowing skin, peaceful demeanor, and patient essence. Your dietary and lifestyle choices are showing up in your appearance, and your inner state is reflecting in your outer. Continue caring for your sacred vessel and nourishing your body with the foods and practices that make you thrive. All right, I like it. Make time for sleep, cooking, meditating, and yoga. Though you may feel that you don't have time for these things, the truth is you won't have much time without them. So yeah, it's all about self-care. I think this is really great we you know the card that came out that we were supposed to talk about for your healing was that knight of wands card so this is a really good way to heal if you've been burned by the knight of wands take that energy within yourself practice self-care peace love and healing wish that person well and even if you are a person who's struggling with that kind of knight of wands mentality where you feel drawn to somebody and then your interest is dies down. I think that's also applicable for you as well to think about how you're interacting with other people with this harmony card. Um, and also um, focusing on your own peace, your own love, your own healing, taking good care of yourself instead of looking for that validation outside of yourself. Okay, I'm gonna change out this candle. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get some advice cards for you, handwritten advice cards. And these kind of go along with that idea of self-care. A lot of these are geared towards those types of practices.
Yoga Nidra was also something that came out, which um, is a really nice meditative practice, helps you develop this mind-body connection and be able to relax deeply and um, also clear your energy too, I think. But another great way to clear your energy is through doing like a chakra healing meditation. There's lots of those on YouTube and on Inside Timer and stuff like that. Because I do feel like in this group, both you and your person are tugging on each other's energy. They're tugging on yours a lot. You're trying to um, go down your own path, but... Um, Sometimes it's hard to get away from that tugging feeling, so clearing your energy daily, doing that chakra clearing can help with that. Oh, now the other candle went out. Look at that. Perfect timing. I guess it makes sense since they both got lit at the same time. Let's see. All right, let's see here. Crystals. So yeah, you can use your crystals to help you heal. Hold one over your heart, raise your vibration, whatever makes you feel happy. Um, journal. Oh yeah, that's a great healing practice too. Be your own boss. We've had a lot of, in, of that energy coming out for you, group two. Paint, color, craft, create, draw. Like little activities to um, calm your mind, connect with your creativity and your emotions, watch a video. Hmm. Okay. So there may be some sort of video that you feel drawn to on YouTube that you could watch. Um, I have a heart chakra yoga video you could watch if you wanted to work on healing the heart chakra. Um, and maybe this video <laughs> and then consider your options. So we don't have to feel stuck with, you know, like, I feel like part of you is ready to write this person off and part of you. Group two, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, I was uh, just beginning to wrap up your reading when the juice ran out of my camera and my camera ran out of juice. So uh, sorry about that. But I was just saying with this consider your options card, um, I, I feel like part of you is wanting to just like go ahead and write this person off, but then I feel like there's also another part of you that isn't quite ready to let go. And, um, and in considering your options, I think one way to look at that and to reconcile those opposing energies is to just give space to the possibility that this person could uh, change, that the situation can change, that you could change, and um, just be open to that and surrendering to whatever the divine has in store for you. Um, you can also be open to the option that something new is gonna come around, that's gonna change your mind, somebody new, um, and for those of you who are currently involved with this person, considering your options, it's kind of the same thing, like making space for the fact that the situation could change, could get better, and that even if it doesn't, if, if things fall apart, you, you still got lots of options available to you to take care of yourself and your responsibilities and, and to pursue your own dreams. Okay, so group two, that's what I have for you. Please let me know how it resonated. Leave me a comment, uh, give the video a thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel for future content. I am hoping to start posting more regularly. Of course, I always say that. I, I'm, I'm probably the most worst YouTuber ever, ever at trying to be consistent, but 
I'm doing my best <laughs> to squeeze it in. So I really appreciate you being here and enjoyed your energy. Um, and take care. Thanks. Bye. Hi, group three. Welcome to your reading. Last but not least. And uh, you chose this piece of uh, kind of brown agate. But this is one of my favorites because it looks like a piece of petrified wood, but it's an agate slice. I liked the way that goes with this tree. And then the artwork that you chose is a, a tree carved out of Douglas fir. This is by John Thompson. And the story here, we, uh, my son and I went on a trip with some friends to Colorado and uh, we all picked out little, these little trees and this is the one that my son picked. So before uh, I started recording today's reading, I did a little research on the symbolism of each of the woods that were used in these uh, art pieces in the little carvings. And um, so Douglas fir represents endurance, defiance, resilience, protection, rising to the challenge, or opportunity before you. So what a cool, confident energy, um, very stable. So I also spent a little time kind of holding the tree and meditating on its energy. And the words that came up for me there were um, strong, sturdy, practical, solid, commitment, endurance, and the long haul. So uh, a lot of stable, steady, um, strong energy coming from your group here. I'm going to open up the reading by reading your love spell card, and maybe that will give us a little clue as to what is going on in your situation. Um... So it's called Enchanted Lips. Before a special evening, employ a kiss of glamour by adding one drop of clove oil to your favorite pot of lip gloss and then gently stirring it in while saying aloud three times. The ripest fruit, the perfect petal, each kiss is a spell of utmost bliss. Ooh, okay. I like it. <laughs> so we're going to start by getting your thoughts, feelings, and intentions, and then your person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions towards you. And then we'll clear that out and we'll take a look at the connecting energy, the intertwining energy of the connection. And then we'll clear that out and we'll get some quotes and then we will wrap it up with some uh, oracle cards for uh, guidance for you in your love life. Um, this is mainly uh, about love connections, but I mean, a love connection could be romantic. It could also be like, like family, friend, um, even a business partner or something like that, if, if that's the, the energy that's been tugging on your heart, then um, you can listen to the reading for that connection, but just, you know, maybe not kiss them. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe cool it with some of those clove kisses, okay? Um, let's see here. So we're going to start with the tarot. Okay, so I'm going to use the Wildwood Tarot for your energy. and the Medieval Scalpini deck for your person's energy. Okay, one of these is a blank card. Where did it go? I don't know where it went. Hmm. That's strange. Well, if the blank card pops out, we'll cross that red bridge when we come to it, I guess. I don't know, that's weird, what happened there? Okay, 
And if you if you are bored by uh, a lot of shuffling, please feel free to fast forward. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put a timestamp for the post shuffle <laughs> mark, but please feel free to fast forward through this part. I'm gonna shuffle out and deal all the cards for your energy and then all the cards for your person's energy and then I'll start talking about, about everything after that. Cool. Need a new tripod. <laughs> Arrows, Kingfisher. Okay, so you may be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Okay, group one's thoughts of their person. What are your thoughts of this person who's been tugging at you? Um, the wheel, okay, and the page of vessels, the otter, oh, I love otters. I've been seeing a lot of otter imagery, too, in my tarot readings that I watch. Um, what are group three's thoughts of their person? The guardian, okay, okay. We're going to shuffle these all out and then I'll read for them. What are group three's feelings? Oh, shoot. This one fell down. I'm still going to keep it because it's... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. Three actually came out. I'm going to take them all. So we have uh, the ancestor, which is kind of like the hierophant card. Um, uh, six of bows, abundance, and the archer, which is sort of like the chariot card. And then for your group three's intentions towards their person. We have the King of Stones. We have the Eight of Arrows, Struggle. Okay, these both flew out. Green Woman and Four of Stones Protection. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I like Four of Stones being here with that Douglas fur, too. Such a stable energy. I, I just love that vibe. Very, very uh, earthy type of vibe. And we did have the King of Stones come out as well. Okay, let's look at the medieval Scapini deck for your person's energy. All right, actually, we're gonna use the Antique Anatomy Tarot. I don't know I'm, why, it's, why, why we need to change it up for you guys. <laughs> Just feel like it's good for some reason. Okay, so we're gonna use Antique Anatomy Tarot to describe your person's energy towards you, starting with your person's thoughts of you, group three. What are group three's person's thoughts? world. The Page of Blades. much just flopping out here. What are your person's thoughts? Nine of blades. Okay. Okay. What are your person's feelings for you? Um, 
six of blades. A lot of green and black and white. Lots of healing and purification, absorbing of negative energies coming out in your person's um, cards. Okay, what are your person's feelings for you? Seven of elixirs. Person's feelings towards you. Maybe having a difficult time articulating their feelings towards you, group three. What are your person's feelings? Okay, this came out. The ten of coins. Okay, okay, okay. And what are your person's intentions towards you, group three? Sorry, four blades, excuse me. Hmm, big difference. <laughs> and and what else? Okay. Oh, the eight of elixirs. So let me tune into your energy first, and then we'll talk about your person. Okay, group three, I feel like you are a very strong person because you pick this Douglas fur and it's got those really strong energies attached with it. I feel like that's your energy that you're bringing to the situation. Um, I feel like you've got a lot of spiritual wisdom behind you as well, like under your belt. Um, like, I feel like you've been on this spiritual path for a while now, and you've had your ups and your downs, your ins and your outs, your struggles, and you've learned how to be fearless and to um, go after what it is that you want, go after your abundance, and to be independent and strong and to do things for the right reasons and to protect those he, whom you love. So I feel like you're just an amazing person, <laughs> group three, in other words. Okay, now to get a little more specific, for your thoughts of your person who's on your mind, we've got the wheel and we've got the page of vessels, which is like the page of cups, the otter. And we also have, um, the guardian which is like the devil card it's card number 15. um but it has a much dif different vibe in the wildwood deck than in than many other decks it's a little more positive you know um so uh from that i'm getting like you may this person may have been in your life for a while or if not you've been around you know like i said it's not your first rodeo You've had a lot of experience in life and learned a lot already on your spiritual path. And um, 
I think with the page of otters here, you, you do think about this person and you're fond of them, you care for them, you, like there's part of you that wants to nurture this connection with them. And so you think of them like a mother otter would think of their baby, you know, like you wanna take care of them. But you're also looking away as though you know that it's not your responsibility to take care of this person. So you've got to kind of turn away for a little bit and let them figure things out on their own. And then the guardian here is uh, about your fears. And I feel like group three, you've confronted your fears in the past. And so you know how brave you are. You're not afraid of this guardian anymore, but you also know that your person may be facing some sort of toxicity or temptation, or they may be offering you, you some sort of toxic situation that doesn't abide with your intentions. And so you have this awareness of the dark side of this connection as well, and you're not afraid of it, you're not afraid to confront it, but also, um, you're not gonna be pushed around by it, okay? And then for your feelings towards your person, we have the ancestor, which is kind of like the Hierophant, but it's about following tradition um, and uh, doing what's right and um, doing, it's about ancestral healing and following the path that you know you were meant to take. And it can, can also mean a spiritual path, and especially in this deck. Like you're you're on your spiritual path. We've got the, the wheel and then the ancestors. So I think you may be um, experimenting with shamanism and things like that or just out there um, taking one day at a time, trying to stay in the present moment and focusing on your spiritual development. So your feelings towards this person, it's like you, you have feelings of um, love and unconditional love, forgiveness, um, protection, wanting to take care of them. And um, also just, um, Praying for them, I guess, is what I'm thinking of. Like, they're in your prayers, if that makes sense. And then we've got the Six of Bows for abundance. So I think as far as your feelings for this connection, like, again, you wish them well. You hope they're doing well. Um, maybe you see some potential for the two of you to build abundance together. But mainly I think it's like you feel secure in your own life, like you've got enough, you've got plenty of love to share, um, and you're hoping that this person also is able to find the abundance that they need and, and the success that they need in their life. And then we have the Archer, which is like the chariot card, and it's another card of success, um, aiming for what you want, um, and going out to get it. So I feel like you are a powerful manifester. You've got what you need. You've got a lot of confidence. And I think there is something that you want from this other person that you'd like to see happen. Like you have some sort of a goal here. I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about what that goal might be in just a minute, but um, I also think you're at peace enough to realize that that your connection with this other person like isn't your end all be all. So you are still gonna be fine even if your paths don't end up um, being intertwined for the long haul. But like in the long haul, you've got your own back. Um, this person is invited to join you in your abundance. If they are coming to you in, in a good energy that you can abide with. But I also feel like you're not afraid of going the path alone either. Um, so we've got the King of Stones. Oh my gosh, I've been thinking that I was like 
showing y'all the cards this whole time. Sorry. I don't know how long this has been all crazy. 22 minutes into the reading, so <laughs> can't have been longer than that. Uh, okay, so King of Stones, the Wolf. Again, this is your. So this is your. And these are your intentions towards your person. So, King of Stones. If you resonate with more masculine type of energy, which I think some of you might. I don't know. Picking the Douglas fur, it had a lot of really masculine qualities about it. So you may feel really strong and stable on your own. And even if you don't resonate as a man or whatever, you, you, you're still the kind of person who's got that inner strength and stability. And if you're looking for, um, uh, you know, if you're interested in, man, in men and looking for uh, a love partner, this is the kind of partner that you're looking for. Someone who is strong and stable and independent on their own. And then the Eight of Arrows is about struggle. So this is kind of like the Eight of Swords card. Um, it can be about being trapped within the prison of your own thoughts. But like I said, um, I think you've already kind of been through those hard times and you know that you can keep your lantern lit and keep moving forward no matter what kind of scary things might lay up ahead, no matter what kind of challenges or opportunities lay up ahead. It's like that Douglas fir energy again, like you're able to keep facing those challenges as life goes on. And then um, your intentions towards this person, we had the green woman and the four of stones protection. So depending on, you know, the your gender, or whatever in the situation or what, what kind of a connection this is, you could see this other person as your divine counterpart and you may if you're taking on more of like a masculine role in this connection you may feel like a need to protect her or um you could identify as the feminine energy and feel a need to um nurture and protect not only your own energy but um to nurture and protect this connection as well to be that safe haven like your person could be this little deer that that needs the safety of your um, connection from time to time okay so um your person's energy towards you so their thoughts we've got the world card and then we have the page of blades and we have the nine of blades and so those three cards together first of all they're telling you that you're definitely on their mind a lot a lot but also that maybe there's been some sort of an ending here you may have set some boundaries with this person um and um so things came to a close with the world card that could be about completion and um Page of Blades means they're thinking of you. They may, might be trying to keep up with you on social media and stuff like that. And then the Nine of Blades is about anxiety and worry. So this could even be keeping them up at night, perhaps. It makes me think like if this person did something that crossed a boundary and you had to set a boundary and end things with them, then they're kind of stressed out about it. Um, And it could also be a fear uh, of stepping into this new phase of a relationship with you if, if the separation aspect doesn't resonate. It could be that you're on their mind and they've got some apprehension and fears about moving things forward to the next level. Their feelings, we've got the Six of Blades the seven of elixirs and the 10 of coins. So um, I think they see you as home. They see you as a safe haven. They are trying to move from chaos to safety with the six of blades being there. Um, but the seven of elixirs though, I think that 
they're a little bit confused in their feelings and um, kind of feeling pulled in different directions and maybe not sure if they're worthy of you or um, wondering if it's like the grass is greener type of thing, like they're thinking of you because they can't have you and then if they do, then what's gonna happen next? Like, are you gonna be able to really build this 10 of pentacles together? Like they want that, but they're also afraid that it's just a fairy tale, basically. That that happily ever after thing is just a fairy tale. And then in their intentions, they, you've got the sun, which is super positive. They think the, they think highly of you. They, you make them happy. They wish you happiness. We've got the four of blades, which is about healing, another beautiful energy and um, rest. They hope you're getting peace and rest and healing and all the things that you need especially if they've hurt you in some way, they're hoping that you're healing from that, I think. And um, with the aid of elixirs, that's about walking away, but it's also about walking towards um, what's really meant for you. We've got aura cleanse, soul journey, the void, wake up potion, despair, let go potion. So. I think that they are maybe walking away because maybe this has ended and they're trying to let it go, but they're walking towards spiritual development. You've transformed the way they look at things and they are trying to clear their energy as they move forward and figure out what it is that their soul is calling them to walk towards. Sometimes Eight of Cups can mean they're walking back to you as well. So it could be like someone returning from the past. So take that how it resonates for your situation. Okay, I'm going to clear these and then we'll take a look at the um, connecting energies. And I think I'm going to use the antique anatomy for that. Okay, so first we're gonna get a card representing the energy that you inhabit, that you're currently inhabiting in this connection, group three. And then we'll get a card for the energy that your person is inhabiting. Okay. And then this next card will be how your person sees you, how they perceive you, how they interpret your energy. And then we'll get a card to show how you perceive them and interpret their energy. And then we'll get the passing energy of the connection.
ground in the current energy of the connection. Let's just get one if we can. Let's take both of these. And then the approaching energy of the connection. Okay. Just saw that a candle went out. I'll try to fix that one. Sorry. <laughs> I've had these candles for like one week and I have probably gone through like 50 candles <laughs> that have burned in these little holders. All right. Okay, and then we're gonna get one card at the top um, for what uh, God, spirit, the universe, your guides, what do they want us to focus on when it comes to your guidance and healing for this connection? So we have for your energy, the seven of coins, evaluating, kind of taking a step back. And then for their energy, we have the seven of elixirs, another seven card. So that's another card about considering options. Um, now with seven, I guess the difference is with seven of coins, you're trying to figure out like what this connection might bring to your life. It's going to pay if it's worth the investment of your energy. If there's going to be a payoff here, you know, um, whereas the seven of elixirs is more about um, being drawn and pulled in different directions, tempted by lots of different things. And this situation in particular is a tempting one. But there's also a lot of confusion and a lot of other things vying for this person's attention. Um, the way that they are seeing you is the nine of blades. They're stressed out about something. They may have treated you as an option and now they're stressed out because they did or um, it may be feelings of low self-worth as well. Maybe they feel like they're an option and that you've got a lot of options and they're afraid and anxious that you're not going to pick them. And then um, the way that you're viewing your person is the two of elixirs. So yeah, you see them as a, a divine counterpart, a romantic interest, like you're interested in them. And you've got this positive, loving energy that you're ready to share with someone. But I don't think you're going to put up with any wishy-washy energy either. You're really steadfast, so... Hmm. Okay, let's see. So, with the passing energy, we've got the Knight of Rods. The current energy, we had the Ten of Rods come out and also the Ace of Elixirs. And for the approaching energy, the Four of Rods. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think this is a situation, maybe it uh, was like one of those 
hot and fast connections in the beginning. Maybe you guys couldn't keep your hands off each other. Maybe it was a really physical, passionate affair. And now like the question of responsibilities coming up, unconditional love, like it can't just be about passion and excitement and adventure all the time. You also have to have responsibilities in life and you have to treat each other with love and respect if things are gonna endure or continue in a connection with anybody, right? And so uh, the approaching energy though is really nice. It's the four of rods, which is about that stability. It's it's another good Douglas fir <laughs> type of energy card. Stability, home, um, it could be about uh, reconciliation between two parties that have separated. Um, yeah, and just, celebration and finding joy but in a stable way so i love how that four of rods kind of marries these two energies that we're talking about it's like the marriage of um, fun and excitement with responsibility and love okay and then for what your guides want us to talk about we've got the four of coins so that's another card of stability, another four card, um, which is good. Stability is good, but with the four of coins, sometimes it's a little stagnant and um, an energy of holding back and not giving enough, not sharing enough, not being vulnerable enough. So we may be talking about vulner vulnerability a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna clear these away. And next we're gonna draw some quotes. And so these quotes could be interpreted as what your person would say to you if they had the guts. <laughs> no, I'm sure they're a fine person, but you know, what they, what they might say to you if they had the chance or if they felt secure enough to tell you. Um, it could also be messages just intended for you from your guides. And maybe what you would say to your person if you felt confident in sharing it with them. Go both ways. Okay. I'm just going to read all these out. Take them how they resonate. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection, Buddha. And I think you know that, group three. I think you've been there, done that, gone through that journey. <laughs> Often the best way to relax is just to go back to work, Steve McQueen. I always wanted to be a father and thought it would be great but it just took the right woman and the right time to make it all happen, Matthew McConaughey. If you want to change the way people respond to you, change the way you respond to people, Timothy Leary. There is nothing more rare nor more beautiful than a woman being unapologetically herself, comfortable, in her perfect imperfection. To me, that is the true essence of beauty. Steve Maraboli. I didn't fall in love, of course. It's never up to you. But she was walking back and forth, and I was passing through. Leonard Cohen, The Book of Longing. Sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. Thich Nhat Hanh. You won't regret the men you never killed, but you will regret the women you passed up. Bernard Cornwell. Narrow, narrow your life down to this moment. Your life situation may be full of problems. Most life situations are. 
but find out if you have a problem at this moment. Do you have a problem now? Eckhart told. Sticking with the marriage, that's true grit, man. Jeff Bridges. Never apologize and never explain. It's a sign of weakness, John Wayne. Okay, and then what else do we have here? Deep breathing is our nervous system's love language. Dr. Lauren Fogel, Mercy. Just because no one else can heal or do your inner work for you, doesn't mean you can, should, or need to do it alone. Lisa Oliveira. A soulmate's purpose is to shake you up, tear apart your ego a little bit, show you your obstacles and addictions, break your heart open so new light can get in, make you so desperate and out of control that you have to transform your life. Elizabeth Gilbert. Yeah. I've always enjoyed the opposite sex a lot. Always have, always will. Betty White. Self-care is how you take your power back. Lala Delia. You'd be surprised how fast things happen when the right man comes along. So we have this quote about timing and then that, um, the Matthew McConaughey quote about wanting to be a father and everything just had to happen at the right time. It's kind of interesting. I may be a senior, but so what? I'm still hot, Betty White. <laughs> okay, so take this how they resonate. I did get a lot of that energy of like, um, kind of like a reformed rake type of energy, maybe coming from your person, um, someone who kind of wasn't in a very mature energy in the past, maybe kind of reevaluating that, um, but still kind of on their journey, you know, and I feel like this is a very spiritual pile and I feel like you, group three, maybe you're a little further along on your journey. Although further along probably isn't the right word because the journey just goes <laughs> around and around. But I think maybe you've been kind of a, in a more stable energy for yourself. And um, maybe this other person is just kind of new, getting their feet wet in more of the esoteric concepts and um, just starting out, getting to know themselves and their spiritual path. I'm trying to figure out what to make of all that. Okay, so I'm gonna get a healing spell for you guys too. We have a dream mist potion. Sleeping on a crisp, clean, herb scented sheets always makes for the soundest sleep and delicious dreams. Here is a potion for dreamers. Four drops lavender oil, three drops chamomile oil, three drops orange oil, and four ounces of distilled spring water. Shake the oils and water in a colored glass spray bottle or mister. 15 minutes before you retire, spray your bed linens, bath towel, pillow, and all around your room. You may want to keep a dream journal by your bed to record what happens during the night. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I like, that sounds really nice, the dream mist, but um, also, uh, just keeping a dream journal is a good practice. Maybe going back to look at it from time to time. I always type my dreams out in my notes on my phone because it's right there. Da -da -da. 
the guidance do we have for group three? We want to kind of get some guidance about that four pentacles energy as well. some handwritten advice cards and we'll unpack all this advice. <coughs> We have get clarity, focus on yourself, balance your chakras, light a candle, watch a video. That came up for group two as well. Um, so any videos that you feel drawn to, I'm just putting a little plug out there. All my, my tarot card readings are timeless, so feel free to check out any reading that you feel drawn to. But yeah, getting Clarity on your situation is really important. Focusing on yourself, your own energy, balancing your chakras. You could you could watch a video actually about um, chakra balancing meditations and um, and use that guided meditation to help cleanse your energy. And light a candle, make a wish, light a candle, wish for healing. And yeah, it sounds like with that four of pentacles, and this advice combined with it, maybe the advice actually is to just kind of stay in that four, to, four of pentacles energy for the time being while your person figures out their own path. You can focus on yours, kind of hold your energy back a little bit. Maybe that's what they're trying to tell us there. Um, we also have sattva, which is about balance. And we have card number 18, Nurturing. I feel like you're a very nurturing person, group three. Like, I don't know, you seem so reliable and resourceful and kind, loving. It's a beautiful energy. So let's read about what nurturing says and then we'll finish with the yogic path oracle. Um, things do not happen without effort. Effort rarely takes the form of something huge and titanic, of immense sacrifice or a gargantuan commitment. Effort is manifested with attention. Empathy, care, gentleness, punctuality, or just consequences. Love is in the attention first and foremost. Then follows patience and just a bit of selflessness, and all the growing energies are in the right place so that something else may grow and flourish. It could mean you need care, help, and support. Someone other than you may need care, help, and support. Care is day after day and not just all at once. And good things take time and effort. 
All right. So, yeah, I think it's encouraging you to stay in your nurturing energy, but make sure you take care of yourself so that you fill up your own cup before you start nurturing others, right? Um, and then yogic path, we have sattva. For some reason I thought this meant balance, but it's actually saying um, purity and clarity. So it says, you have let go of the things that were holding you back and are reaching deeper levels of clarity. Oh, we have clarity here too. Maybe you've cleaned up your diet, home, self-care products, relationships, thought patterns, career goals, or life outlook, and are now experiencing the joys that come with purity, sattva. The space you've created is allowing greater gifts that are more aligned with your truth to present themselves. Continue on this path toward clarity by shedding all that is no longer serving you. When your body becomes pure, your thoughts and life will reflect that. Bring sattva purity into all that you do and your path will continue to become more clear. I love it, yeah. I think you're already on that path and um, it's you're just being encouraged to continue, continue tra tapping into your spirituality, continue to nurture yourself and others. And what's meant to be is going to come together for you. Um, and yeah, I think this other person is on their own journey as well and they're gonna find the right path for themselves. So maybe just light a candle for them and, and uh, wish them well and um, pray for them to be happy, healthy, and safe. And pray for those things for yourself as well. And I hope for those things for you too. Thank you so much for being here with me, Group 3. I appreciate your time. If you would remember to give the video a thumbs up, comment below, let me know how this resonated and subscribe to my channel for future readings and content. I'd really appreciate that. And I hope you have a good one and hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Take care.